Hey guys, welcome to Chief Pigskin's YouTube channel. You're about to watch a home clinic where we find one quality coach and he talks on one very specific subject. If you'd like to see more of these come your way, please like and subscribe below and check us out at clinic.chiefpigskin.com. How is everybody? Nate Albaugh here, producer of the online clinic, Chief Pigskin and also a football coach at Unity High School in Tolono, Illinois. And I'm alongside and excited to be alongside Matt Carroll from Cross County High School in Strongsburg, Nebraska. A lifelong Nebraska guy, went to college in Nebraska at Peru State, been coaching in Nebraska for his whole career. And um, what, what about eight years, Coach, you've been coaching? Yep, yep, yep. Eight years he's been coaching and coaching eight-man football alongside head coach Hayden Delano, and he's, as Matt said, he the two of them work very well together, and Matt runs the offense. Um, before I turn it over to you, Coach, I am a huge proponent for, first of all, just small school athletics. Um, I've coached at many size schools, and everywhere I go, in Illinois, for example, there's eight classes in football, one through 8A, right? Well, the 8A guys think the 7A is no good, and 7A think 6A is no good, and 6A thinks 5A is no good, and it just keeps going down. And everywhere I go, for whatever reason, my whole career, I've always been the proponent to say, well, you guys all get over yourselves and realize that just because someone goes to a smaller school, listen, these guys have dudes too. And, and so I have, I have this never shut up about the fact I've, I've kind of always been the proponent on every staff I've been on to respect the small school. And so that's me. I'm a small school respecting guy. And you've been a small school guy for quite a while, I guess, pretty much your whole coaching career. Um, yeah, sure. And so a huge nod to you. I'm again, I'm a, I'm a small school guy. We're talking eight man football today. And we're talking eight man football. First of all, because I love it. I have a little history in it. And I respect it. Again, I would play one-on-one -on -one football. I, I love the game. I want to build the game. And I think these that eight-man football needs more attention, man. So, Coach, we got you on here. And just a little bit, I want to tell everybody about Cross County. So, Cross County started off last year one and three. And then start, then goes on a winning streak. And this winning streak carried them all the way into the state semifinals of the playoffs where they got knocked off by the eventual champs 34-30. to 30. So, I mean, man, you guys had a heck of a year that had to be fun. Coach, was it the first big playoff run you had been a part of? Um, 100%. Um, I had never won a playoff game in my playing career, um, and I had never won a playoff game in my coaching career. So, um, to put four back-to-back -back wins together, it was it was awesome, man. We I enjoyed every second of it. I didn't take any of it for granted, you know. Tried to keep it all in, and I I told uh, one of the other assistants, I said, you know, we just got we have to take it all in because you don't know if you'll ever be back, you know. That's right. So, That's right. And you you start to get to the point where you you feel like, oh, we could always do this, but man, the next year comes and you never know what's going to happen, man. Um, you know, for a great example, we made the semifinals in 2015, and the following year, two of my best players, one of them um, was ineligible from all school activities, and the other one decided to pursue fashion, and I lost two of my best players, and we were not the same team the following year. As you know, so it's like, who could have predicted that? You just, you know, we're like money in the bank. We, we're coming back. Let's go. And didn't happen so um good for you to you know you have to like pinch yourself on those runs like is this really happening did you guys go through those moments where you're like are we in the semis a hundred percent man a hundred percent i i remember a great memory i have is so after we won our first first round game our first my first ever playoff game i came down from the box and i i, I hug i gave our head coach hayden a big bear hug and he got kind of mad. He was like, man, act like you've been there before. I said, dang it, coach, I've never been here before. <laughs> That's great, man. My dad used to say the same thing. Act like you've done it before. Well, um, coach, I'm going to turn this over to you, man. We're going to talk single wing, uh, eight-man football. I'm just going to turn this over to Matt. And I uh, hope that you guys all enjoy this. And uh, leave comments below and reach out to Coach afterwards. Show him, uh, share that love, Coach. It's all yeah, yours. Yeah, for sure. I would love to. I would love to talk. it. As I was telling uh, Coach, you know, a lot of a lot of times when I was first starting out, you know, trying to learn eight man, um, I there's not a lot of resources out there for eight man single wing. 
So uh, if, if you guys uh, want to hit me up after this, I'll be more than willing. So um, we're just going to talk about um, just the sweet play today. We're just going to give you a little taste um, of the sweet play in our offense out of, out of our single wing. So just to talk a little bit about it, why we run the single wing, okay, why you want to run, uh, why we want to run sweep. Um, it allows us to be us. Okay, I'm an offensive, a former offensive lineman guy. I want to run the ball. Um, that that is what we our our core philosophy is built around running the football. Um, me uh, and Coach Delano talk all the time about how if you want to be a team hey, that makes a deep run in Nebraska um, late into the playoffs, you have got to be able to play through the cold weather. And um, while all these spread offenses, they look great. Okay, it's hard to throw the ball in negative 25 with um, or negative five degrees with 25 mile an hour per hour winds. That was an actual temperature taken from our quarterfinal playoff game. Um, we uh, everyone knows we were going to run the ball anyways. So uh, why I I I talked to to Coach Delano all year and I said why not Why don't we just put an extra blocker on the field? Everybody knows we're going to run the ball. You know, um, let's let's put an extra blocker on the field because a little bit about this, um, our single wing stuff. We didn't. Oh, which brings me to my next point. It's simple, easy to learn and install. <laughs> Not install this this package until week eight. So um, week eight of the season, our last regular season game. Um, I've been begging Coach Delano to let me install it and 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 work with, on it for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, he kept telling me no. He said we got too much stuff as it is. Um, and so I, I finally, you know, kind of convinced him to uh, let us install it as just a two point conversion formation because an eight man, we don't kick a lot of extra points. Um, we, we, we always go for two. Um, and he, he finally let us and it, it, the kids picked it up very quickly. And we ended up with, um, we ended up, it ended up becoming a huge part of who we were offensively. You know, we started just running it uh, for two point conversions. And by the time our quarterfinals came off, I mean, it was 70% of our offense in that game, um, which brings me to it's effective. Okay. It, we installed it weeks, um, week eight, like I said, it averaged our sweet play alone, which is the only thing I'm going to talk about today, averaged 11.6 yards per carry. It accounted for seven two point conversions. Um, and five touchdowns during our four game playoff run there where um, it would that. So that's only four games. Our entire single wing offense accounted for um, a, just under 600 yards in those four games. Um, so, I mean, you can't argue with the numbers. It, it's extremely effective. Um, moving on here. Okay. Um, this is what the formation looks like. So it is, it's an unbalanced formation. Okay, um, heavy unbalanced. We use a, a wing over there and a, a fullback. I'll kind of go over what, what we're looking for in the personnel there, but that's what the formation looks like. Um, splits, you know, are, are just our normal splits, two foot splits between those offensive linemen guys. Okay, our one back, um, this is the guy um, who is catching the snap and he is, he's your playmaker. He's your number one um, ball carrier. We were lucky enough, we, we could plug a few guys in there this year. Um, but um, that's that's who you want taking the snap here, um, whether that's your whether you're lucky enough that that's your quarterback. Um, for us, it was our running back. We never we never threw the ball out of this formation through five games. Um, we just we just didn't do it. OK, our two back there is our fullback. Um, he is uh, he's got to be a great blocker. Um, you know, um, we were we were really blessed with a kid who uh, who just who picked this up and and was was excellent excellent blocker for us out of um from that sniffer position um uh our three back now this guy is um we we played around with this position quite a bit through this little run um you guys you guys could play a, a tight end there a fullback type there um we're talking about even next year maybe playing one of our smaller offensive linemen guys there um, they got to be a great blocker. We, 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 uh, we went through a lot of different guys there, but, but those are the guys, again, great blocker. This, this formation is all about running the football and you got to have your best eight blockers on the field. Um, our, our why is, um, your best blocking tight end. Okay. Um, a guy that can help you set the edge. You're going to have to set the edge with, with sweep. Um, your X, if you've got a guy that maybe, you know, struggles in the blocking game a little bit, this is where you could put him. You could put him on the backside of the formation and you could hide, you can technically, you can hide a guy here. 
Um, we are lucky enough. We don't, um, we don't switch our tight ends. They both can do what we needed to do. So they just, they move with the strength of the formation. Um, our center, we talk all the time about how our center has to be a snapper first. Um, we, we shotgun snap. I, I can't tell you how many time, how many shotgun snaps, a hundred before practice, a hundred after practice. We are constantly um, having our guys work with the, work with the, the running backs or quarterbacks, whoever's taking the shotgun snap. Um, I'm sure that's like that in every shotgun offense, but, but we want that, that shotgun snap to be there and so we can get into our, our paths as quick as we possibly can. And so we want them to be a snapper first and a blocker second. Um, our quick guard there is our best pulling lineman. He, uh, he's a guy that can block well in space and he's gonna, ha he's gonna need to do that on this sweep play. And then our strong guard, if you got a guy that's maybe a little bit slower, a little bit bigger, this guy is blocking down 90% of the time on almost all the plays that we run out of, out of this formation. Coach, uh, everything going all right? Am I going too fast or do I need to slow down or anything? Going good? All right. Sometimes I get to going and I start talking fast. So uh, this is what our sweep play looks like. Um, again, it's, we run this sweep play. We only run it to the strength of the formation. Okay, um, I'll just go over, you know, responsibilities and jobs um, um, for our guys here. So uh, um, our, our one back, our, our one back is he's catching the snap. He's sprinting to the, uh, to the strong side, the outside of the formation, and he's reading his blocks to daylight. Okay, um, he does. We, we are fortunate to have a, a kid that is, is a fantastic block reader. He's just got that instinctively in there, and, and he can make that one cut and get north and south and go. Okay, um, our, our fullback guy, our two, our sniffer, okay, um, he pulls to the outside, and his job is to block the second threat outside, okay? He reads the guard's block. If the guard kicks out, okay, um, which we'll get into why he would have to do that, okay, he wraps inside, okay? Let's go, let's go to the quick guard right now. Let's, let's, uh, I wish I would have uh, organized it that way, but our, our quick guard, he pulls the outside and blocks the first threat to the outside, um, we know that if we're running sweep, our guys know no matter what defensive formation they're in, they're leaving two guys on the outside at the second level, okay? So whether that is an outside linebacker or whether that's a safety, okay, or two outside linebackers, um, they know that they're leaving two guys at the second level on the, the outside of the formation. So our quick guard, he pulls the outside, and he's going to block the first one that, that shows, the first threat. Um, we had a lot of corners uh, or outside linebackers play our sweep play very aggressively. And so we coach our, our quick guard to just kick him out. If he's going to fly up the field and, and, and try and set the edge there, we just kick him out. And, uh, and then our two will wrap up inside of that. Okay. And you'll, we'll, we'll see some of that on film. Um, if he can, if he can uh, get pulled to the outside and he can seal that guy to the inside and we can get the sideline, Obviously, that's our, our, our number one uh, priority with our quick guard. Um, again, and then two, okay, he is, he pulls right behind that guard, and he is, he, uh, he's reading that guard's block. If the guard kicks out, he wraps up inside of it, okay, and the one follows him. If, if guard sets the edge and bites that outside shoulder, gets his defender pinned inside, he wraps to the outside and, and continues to look for the next threat. Um, I, I tell you, I'll tell you right now, and you're going to see it on film, it is a, it's truly a thing of beauty when you watch those guys pull in unison um, together. It, it, to me, as an offensive coordinator, offensive line coach, it, it is, it's like a, it's a thing of beauty, man. I love, I love watching it. Um, uh, Wise job here is to set the edge, okay? He is, uh, he is, uh, he's absolutely hit, uh, bite the outside shoulder, pin that defensive end to the inside, okay? He, he has got to set the edge. That's the number one, number one priority for him. He, he's got a big, big job um, um, in this play right here. Our three, which is our wing back, he, uh, his, jobs are, his job is to help the Y set the edge, okay, because it's so important to have that edge set on this play. So um, he, he, helps the, uh, he helps the Y set the edge. And then his eyes are in, on the inside threat on the second level, inside. Okay, this was a big, um, a big deal for us. Um, that, that, that three, when we were teaching this play, our three, our wing, he always wanted to look outside because we knew, um, he knew we were running to the outside. So his eyes would always go to the outside. But it's extremely, dis, uh, extremely important that his eyes stay disciplined 
and his eyes are on that 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 set that 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 guy on the inside, if that makes sense. And it, again, there's no defense drawn here, um, but we'll see that on film. You'll see how um, our wings did a great job of doing that, of being disciplined and keeping their eyes on the, that second threat inside, because we know the first two threats are taken care of by these two guys. Hopefully, this is making sense. I know I feel like I'm talking really fast. Um, our our X. Okay, he, uh, he blocks the backside defensive end. His only job is just to not let that guy cross his face, um, which is, like, again, you can get away with, um, you know, if you have a not-so-good blocker, you can play him there. And he's just, he's just got to get in the way of that backside defensive end so he's not chasing the play down from behind. Um, we never had a problem with it. We, we, uh, our guys did a good job with that. And then our center, again, snap first. And then he blocks the inside gap to uh, – to, the second level biggest threat. Um, a lot of this, oh, and the strong guard, he blocks down. If there's a guy head up, gap away. And then if there's nobody there, there's nobody head up, gap away. Then he is, uh, he's going, he's climbing to the second level. Um, I, I really, with this stuff, it, it worked out. It worked out so well for our guys. Our guys were great communicators and they picked this stuff up really well. Um, super simple stuff. I mean, it probably sounds like a lot, from me talking right here, but if you're if you're thinking about if you're a kid, and you're just thinking about doing one of these jobs, it, it becomes it becomes really really simple. Um, I just want to get into uh, some film here I got for you guys. Good. Okay, I'm gonna go full screen here. So um, I talked I talked about a little bit about how this started as a two point conversion formation for us. Um, we. Uh, you know, we uh, we started running it the eighth week of the game. This is that game. We uh, we started running it as a two point conversion. This is the first time we ran it in a game. This is our sweep look. Um, we'll kind of go over it, and I'll run it in slow motion. Um, again, they're they they're in a four two look for us. So we snap the ball here. Um, I would like it if this wing maybe did a better job of, of helping that defensive or helping that, that, that Y pin that guy inside. He, he does a good job with his eyes um, on that inside linebacker and uh, we get to pay dirt there. Run it back again. Our, our quick guard does a good job. Getting out there in space, finding the threat. We do a good job of setting the edge. We get out there and there's there's some there's color there's color there but they can't they can't get to the edge and uh, and uh, we uh, we get we score the two point conversion okay um, next play this is from our first round playoff game um, if you guys they're running a four two as well uh, we run this play <laughs> if you can see this it is like third and seventeen third and eighteen. And uh, <laughs> we got in Wildcat. This is one of the first times we ran um, our single wing stuff uh, that wasn't a two-point conversion. And this kind of this kind of kickstarted it. If you watch our wing here, we're playing a different guy at wing. We were again, we were experimenting a lot. Um, so we put a, a, a more of a tight end guy here at this wing look. He does end up blocking the wrong guy here. I in this four-three look, I would like him to go back to this backside linebacker. Um, he ends up blocking this play side linebacker and it ends up working out for us. But later in the game, he doesn't do that. And this, this backside backer chases us down and, and makes a play. I mean, it's, it's 20 yards down the field, but he still makes the tackle. Um, with this here, just some things I'm noticing right off the bat here. Um, they were playing this uh, defensive lineman in the gap right between our, our, our uh, quick guard and center. And uh, our center, we just talked to him. He just cut him and and he made that 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 dude's life uh, uh, pretty hard this this game because he was getting he was cutting him a lot. Okay, um, uh, we do a great job of setting the edge with both of these guys. Again, our wing I would prefer our wing coming back to number two over here um, to get that second threat on the inside. Um, he's he's again this is we're very early into running this. Um, our two guys wrap on the outside. Okay, we and we find uh, we find the seam there and get right up and down the sideline. Convert third and seventeen um, to a touchdown there. Um, again, same team here, same team. Now this uh, something that we were running sweep so uh, so so many times on these guys out of this formation. A defensive adjustment they tried to make was 
they tried to move this defensive lineman outside of our, our, uh, our wing. Okay, so his inside shoulder is on the outside shoulder of our wing here. Well, um, these guys did um, these guys did a great job of communicating, and so he just set the edge, and um, this guy went up to second level, our tight end here. Again, they don't block the right guy. I think this is the one where this backside linebacker ends up running down the play. Um, I would prefer that these two guys block this guy and this guy. Um, but and, and you'll see that, but we end up getting about 20 yards here on it. Yeah, our wing, I mean, that is, you can't ask for a better job of setting the edge from our wing there. Um, number 14 does a, just a phenomenal job of biting his outside shoulder and keeping him pinned inside. Here comes our quick guard and our, uh, our fullback, our sniffer there. And, uh, you know, we get a we get a nice gain. Now, I'm pretty sure that guy right there that, that makes that tackle um, is the the backside linebacker. But uh, I'm not going to argue with that. Here's an end zone view of us late in the game. This is the same. Uh, this is the same team. Um, now this again. So we were we were hammering them with sweep so much that I mean their coaches must have. He's way on the outside. And at the snap of the ball, I mean, he is, he is flying outside. And, and we teach our guys, you know, um, to freestyle, you know, we don't, uh, we, don't, uh, we don't yell at our guys a lot. So we just take – I said, if he wants to go outside, take him outside, you know, drive his butt to the sidelines. And this is a, a cool moment for me as a coach. I'm sitting here watching this kid. He's a sophomore for us. And he, uh, he literally – he drive – this guy wants to go outside, so he takes him to the track. I mean, it was, it was pretty fun to watch. So we don't necessarily get the edge set here, but he does such a good job of just driving that guy out. And our wing – our wing actually does block the right guy here. He blocks the backside linebacker. If you watch him, though, his eyes – he wants to block number 13. That is not the right guy. Again, early – we're early into running this. Um, still working out some of the kinks. Um, but our, our quick guard picks up the job there, and, and our, uh, our, uh, our sniffer quicks up the job, picks up the job there, and we, uh, we, we find pay dirt again. Okay? Again, guys, we, we had guys that did a great job of, uh, of blocking on the, uh, in space. And here's our tight end way over here blocking him to the track, which was, I mean, again, I'm up here in, this, I'm up here in the booth just going nuts watching that. It was, it was really awesome. Um, this is right here. This is my favorite. This is, I mean, you could not coach it any better. So this is the next week. Um, you couldn't, you couldn't ask for a better play here. Um, this play is run to absolutely per perfection by our guys. Um, I think though, the only, the only negative with it, it does get called back due to a phantom holding call. Um, but it is, this is, this is how you, this is, a, you couldn't draw it up any better. So our, our play side Y there, he's, he's, or X, he's setting the edge. Wing, eyes on the inside, blocking that first threat on the second level. These guys are in a 3-4 three, uh, three, look. Um, our our uh, quick guard out there, see, th that's one of the ones that I was talking about. So this guy is kind of playing this up aggressively, so we teach him to kick out. Our, our fullback sniffer does a great job of reading that, so he wraps up inside. You know, kind of takes that safety for a uh, for a ride, and we're we're to pay dirt again. I'm pretty sure this play was called back due to a phantom holding call, um, but you could not ask for um, um, a better. You know, I'm just gonna watch it in in, in a full speed here, just because it is a thing of beauty when you're talking um, eight man single wing. Those guys pulling out there in unison, oh, just just awesome, 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 awesome. Which is what. This is one of the reasons why we just love this, this uh, formation and this play um, so much. Um, this is from our quarterfinal game. Let's see. I don't, I don't really remember the story behind this one. Uh, this is uh, – I put this one in here, to, you know, to show that uh, not all of these went for touchdowns. Um, our wing does a phenomenal job here. If you watch him, he reads that linebacker's blitzing and, and picks him up. Our tight end, our young tight end here, this guy kind of slow plays him a little bit and gets off the block. We don't maintain our blocks near enough here, but um, most of our guys are, are doing what they're supposed to be doing here. Again, um, this wing this wing and tight end are, are, are the two, two most important um, blocks on the play. Pretty good job, you know. I think we end up with six, seven yards out of it, and I'm sitting here talking about how um, it's not good enough. Um, now, this play right here, 
Um, we, we kind of fiddled with this too. Um, so this is, this is basically like our sweep look. Um, we do run a little bit of zone concepts in our run game. And so um, we just tagged an outside zone um, call on this. And so these guys, the, their jobs are a little bit different. If you guys are familiar with outside zone, um, I'm not going to get into that, but I just wanted to show you that um, we, uh, we just tagged our sweep with outside zone look here. And this was a, this was a big play for us um, in this playoff game. This, this gave us the lead and uh, we never looked back from there, but that's all, that's all the film I have for you guys. Um, let me get, if anybody has any kind of questions or wants to know more about, um, about what we got going on here. Um, here's some of my contact info. You can follow me on Twitter. Okay. Coach underscore M Carroll. Um, tweet at me, DM me. Okay. My email address is, is attached there. Um, I love to talk eight man single wing again there. I don't, I didn't, when I first started doing all this, I didn't think there was hardly any resources out there for um, someone that wanted to run single wing in, in the eight man format. Um, so if you guys want to reach out again, I would love to talk about it. Um, we basically run four concepts out of it. We run sweep, we run power, we run counter, and we run our wedge, which is a direct snap to that fullback. And our, our fullbacks really, really, really love that. But uh, um, those are the four concepts we run on. Super simple stuff, um, effective. Again, I would love to hear from you guys if, if anybody wants to hear anything. But I, I really enjoyed uh, uh, presenting. Uh, thank you guys. Um, for or thank thank you for having me on. I hopefully I, I did a good job. I felt like I was talking a million miles an hour at, at some point. But coach, very well done. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, good. I unmute my mic. Coach, great job, man. I really enjoyed watching that. Um, I mean, it looked like some great crowds at those games. Those atmospheres must have been electric. It was awesome, man. What I love most, like everybody's like on top of the field, man. When you get the crowd, literally, like there, you could touch them. That's when those crowds are loud, man. Super impressive. That number 10, that was that quarterback? Yep, yep. He's back? A, he's a sophomore. So he, he'll, be, he'll be a junior next year. He was, a, he was actually a kid that was um, hurt at the beginning of the season. He didn't play for us. And he didn't play to about week five for us. And, and he caught fire, man. He, uh, he just is one of them kids that just has a, has a nose. And I, I know our, our, we have another running back that, that did take some snaps out of one of our other uh, uh, single wing formations. And, and he, uh, he didn't get any just, justice. I just wanted to show the one single wing formation that, today. But uh, we had a special formation for him, too. And he, he tore it up in that, too. So, but we just wanted to talk about the one today. But. So tell me, um, for next year, are you guys pursuing more single wing stuff? Um, you know, I think, uh, I think we'll be pretty balanced between our single wing concepts and um, I formation. I know um, we have installed a few more uh, different looks from our single wing formation. Um, you know, a, a super heavy unbalanced with two. We have, we have one with that's still that unbalanced look with two fullbacks right behind both of our guards, right up behind the line of scrimmage. Again, all the same plays will run out of it. Um, it'll just give them a different look. But I, I think, you know, you know um, I think we'll be pretty balanced between eye formation and, uh, and, and single wing stuff. It just, it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, we take what the defense has given us. And if, if they're going to give us our single wing stuff, we're going to take it. So, yeah. Uh, so you said you run counter. What's your counter play? Is it, is it crisscross? Um, it is, it is, it's, it's not. So the, a lot of the time when we were developed, we played with this counter for like four weeks straight. We had a version of this counter where we were handing it to the, our three, our wing, um, didn't like it. Eventually we finally settled on, um, we figured out defenses were reading our, our fullback because he, I mean, he, he takes you to the play 90% of the time, actually all yeah. the time he takes you to the play. Yeah. So we were taking, we, we weren't even worrying about a, a big counter step with our running back as much. We were taking that counter step with our, our sniffer. And so big counter step with the sniffer. And then um, um, the backside guard, which is our strong guard, he pulls, kicks out to the weak side of the formation. He kicks out the defensive end. Um, after the counter snap step, the, uh, the sniffer wraps up through the hole. And, and uh, okay. we, uh, we, uh, we gash some people with it late again. And the quarterback just keeps it again. Yep, yep. Okay, yep. I like that. 
he the ball's in his hand every time. Again, we uh we did except for our wedge play, which is again a direct snap to yeah. the, the sniffer. But we we played around with that counter. It took us like three to four weeks to get it right because we tried handing it off to that to our wing mm-hmm. back the other way, and we were losing a blocker. And so uh, so I just I kind of we we finally settled on our counter look and and it paid off big for us. So. Yeah, good for you, man. Well, I'm excited now. So from the sounds of it, you've got your under center snap, you've got the short snap to the fullback and the gun snap. How are you finding time to work on three different snaps? So um, our centers, again, they are, I, I stress with them as be, being the offensive line coach, I stress to them, no, no, uh, no fiddle farting around, if you will, in the locker rooms, get right out to practice. And, and they're, they're constantly snapping the ball. Um, I know I, I, our guys that are potentially going to be centers for us um, next year, before all this, this stuff with Corona uh, went down, they were in the weight room in the mornings and they were getting 50 to 100 snaps every single day. So whether that was, you know, that was so 50 snap and all, all off season as well, all off season. Cause it's, it's such a huge deal. Right. Um, that timing, that timing piece is everything. So, I mean, they're, yeah. And when all the other offensive linemen are, you know, just lifting and worrying about eating and getting big, <laughs> these guys are, are snapping the ball every single day to our running backs. So. Man, coach. Well, thank you so much before I, I'm going to sign us off, but before I do anything else to add, um, no, I just, I, I truly enjoyed it. I, I want to just say thank you. Um, hats off to you. We talked a little bit before we got on here about how much you do um, for the game and how you're promoting the eight man game um, in Illinois. And I just, I think that's great. And I think that I'm going to give you a shout out on your own po- or on your own video. Um, I think that's awesome. That really, really, really uh, stood out to me when you said that. And I, I love the fact, you know, you were, you were saying earlier, football is football, no matter how many kids are on the field and, and uh, more kids need an opportunity to play football. So. Amen to that. Well, coach, thanks again for joining us again, guys. That's, that's uh, Matt Carroll out of cross County, Nebraska. You can look him up on Twitter. That's at coach under, underscore dash. Underscore, underscore M. Carroll. M Carroll. Look him up guys. Thanks again for joining me, guys. If you guys want more information on coaching this great game, check us out at clinic.chiefpigskin.com. Otherwise, like, subscribe. We'll find you right here on our YouTube channel for our next video.